Praise the Lord. How are you today? God bless you. And I pray that the grace of God will continue to uphold you and me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Today, by God's grace and by the help of the Holy Spirit, what we're going to be looking at is the seminary make a man of God. Praise the Lord. The seminary makes a man of God. Does it make a man of God? So what is seminary? Praise the Lord. Seminary is a, an institution, an educational institution. It's a human religious institution or organization set up, educational organization set up by modern Christianity for the purpose of training church pastors and leaders or workers in the church. Yes, praise the Lord. That is seminary. And you know, this is not the church, uh, pardon, in the Bible. It is not a biblical pattern. See, in the seminary, you have to pay. I call it religious university. That is what it is. That is exactly what seminary is. A religious Christ, uh, university for Christians. So let's look at what the Bible says about um, church leaders' qualification, and let's let's see, let's see. Um, First Timothy chapter three to one to let me see four and then seven. Praise the Lord. This is a faithful saying. If a man desires a position of a bishop, he desires a good thing. He desires a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one, one wife, temperate, sober, sober-minded, of good behavior, hospitable, Able to teach and not given to wine, no violence, no greedy for money, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not convertious. One who rules his own house well, heaven, children in submission, heaven is children in submission with all reverence. Praise the Lord. And then it went down to say, okay, let me read seven. Moreover, he must have a good testimony among those who are outside, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Praise the Lord. So we could see from here qualifications of church leaders like pastors bishop you know leaders in the church deacons also the church deacons they have to be a blameless man that's one of the first thing people that are spiritual minded people that are full of faith and are full of the spirit of god and you could see that in addition for a, a pastor or a bishop in verse 7, it says that this person must have a good testimony among those who are outside. Who are outside? Who are the ones outside? These are the unbelievers. So you must have a good testimony even among the unbelievers. Can you see? Not only with the church, but even among unbelievers. Maybe people in his neighborhood, people at his workplace. People that are unbelievers that know him. There must be a good testimony about him. But it's sad today that we don't have that for church qualification anymore. Yes, church leadership appointment or qualification is now based 
on your educational status. That is not the biblical pattern. Praise the Lord. So you see, most of our pastors, they don't even need to be examined concerning their characters. No, no unbeliever has to give testimony about that. Some are even married and re divorced and remarried. That doesn't matter. A young believer can go to seminary and then study for about four or five years, get the degree, get a doctorate, and then he begins to pastor a church. That is not the biblical standard. So everybody wants to have a title. Everybody wants to um, you know, have a position, a career. Praise the Lord. And when we look at the, the, the Bible standard, the apostles, um, Jesus chose the 12 disciples, most of them, they are fishermen, fishermen, uneducated. So, and they were spiritual men, working with the Lord. They were trained, they suffered. They were, you know, they were rigorously trained through teachings, day and night. They were always with Jesus, learning. That's discipleship. And when Jesus was um, uh, was going to die, he told them that it, when he, he rise, when he rose from the dead, he's going to go ahead of them in Galilee. Then when when he rose from the dead, he went to Galilee, and then he told them they needed to wait at uh, Jerusalem to receive the power of the Holy Spirit. So, church started with the power of the Holy Spirit. They received the power of the Holy Spirit before they started ministering. Praise the Lord. But today, that is not the qualification. That is not. The uh, disciples, the apostles, they were discipled by Jesus. They were mature spiritually. They were not just babies. And even people around them, unbelievers, they know that this one, they are Christian. They know that they are followers of Christ. Praise the Lord. They were blameless men, holy men, full of faith, walking in the Spirit. And they were preaching through the power of the Holy Spirit. Not their educational um, status. In fact, most of them didn't have any educational background. Paul, who, who had education and as in religious, who was trained by some Pharisees, later when he got converted and gave his life to Jesus Christ, he said he counted all that dung, loss. So he had to be discipled again. So he didn't, he was not using his educational, his um, religious education that he got from the Pharisees. He had to be discipled, trained by the um Peter, Barnabas, and all the apostles before him. Yes, he had to submit himself to be taught. And then he went to Arabia. He was uh, seeking the Lord and was there for about three years, learning under the Lord himself. Personal encounter with the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, is that what we have today? No. You, you need an education to be qualified as a leader in the church. So, uh, seminary is a modern and postmodern Christian ideology. You know, they are accredited by um, government's educational standard. They are human institution. Uh, and how can an institution accredited by men produce spiritual men of God? It is impossible. Like, um, Jesus rightly said, flesh gives birth to the flesh, and the spirit gives birth to the spirit. So, seminary can never make a man of God, can never make a spiritual man of God. Praise the Lord. So, since the modern uh, organized churches have replaced discipleship, with seminary education, seminary degree, the church leadership has become more of career, a career ministry, yes? 
in administration and business management, in the church business, rather than a spiritual um, position. Praise the Lord. And I pray that the Lord will help us. So church is now an institution, a career organization, a business organization or religious organization where people look for jobs. Yes. Where people are paid. They have their salary. So they hire your qualification. They hire your pay. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And, you know, we can't really expect much because it's all flesh. Most of every the training is true is flesh, and uh, so whatever the product is flesh, and that's why we are having a lot of issues. You know, babies, spiritual babies, just get some uh, degree, some certificate, and then. They began to lead the church. And so babies are making babies, babies. And so discipleship has been, has been, you know, removed, has been forgotten. And the church started with discipleship. Discipleship is tr um, training people, teaching people all that Jesus has commanded so that they will learn to follow Jesus. Praise the Lord. So many people are just going to church religiously. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I pray that the Lord God will, will help all of us and open our eyes. Is God leading you to go to seminary? Go. If God is leading you, praise the Lord. God led me and I, um, I came to the seminary in the U.S. to study. Praise the Lord. And I really thank God for the training. Yes, I thank God for the training. Because it's it's a benefit, great benefit for me in my ministry in the postmodern world. Amen. So for me, one, God used the seminary to prepare me for ministry in the postmodern, you know, context. Yes. Also to expose all the false doctrine, doctrines of demons, false teachings that are going on in the modern churches. Yes, God used the seminary to expose it. I was shocked with all the teachings when I got to the seminary. I was like, what? And I thank the Lord for like bringing, bringing me here to learn all this. I'm like, okay, so this is where all these teachings and... You know, they are coming from and also God used the seminary to help me be able to confront and be able to contain those doctrines false doctrines through sound teaching of the Word of God through the truth of the Word of God by the help of the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit begin to give me understanding and helps me help me to through the scripture to be able to see what you know the truth is especially the first the first doctrines once saved forever saved was the first one I encountered when I was in the seminary. I was like, God, please help me because it almost got me deceived, confused, and you know. <laughs> but praise the Lord, the Lord like, don't worry, I brought you here for a purpose for you to be able to understand all this. And through the Word of God, the Word of God is truth and life. The Holy Spirit began to help me to like use the scripture to expose those evil and uh, demonic doctrines. Praise the Lord. And also, uh, seminary helps me to understand the modern Christianity. Yes, it's helped me to understand the modern Christianity and their mindset, their ideology, how a modern Christian think. Mm-hmm. And is, is, the Lord helped me to be able to understand that and to help them to grasp the truth of the gospel, to, to be able to disciple them and help them to know the truth rather than you know the wrong teachings that they've been indoctrinated with in the seminary. Praise the Lord. Also, seminary it helps me to be relevant in the religious academic 
world and modern church setting. Praise the Lord. To the glory of God, by God's grace, I have my degree. We can stand by God's grace together and like, okay, let's look at the scripture together. It is only if you have a degree, a seminary degree, that you can do a debate or whatever to them. And who knows, some of the debate might bring many of them to the truth of the gospel instead of the lies that they've been trained, they've been taught. Praise the Lord. So I really appreciate God you know, for my seminary you know, training. So sometimes God permits some things in the religious circle, in the religious in the Christ, in Christianity doesn't mean that it is God's perfect will. God just allow them. All those organization, missionary organization, seminary organization. The church is supposed to be a living body and not a religious institution. It's supposed the church is supposed to be a, a living body, living organism, a family. A family of God, kingdom of God, you know, trained in righteousness, peace, joy, how to build God's kingdom on earth. But on the contrary, what we have today is not. Rather, the word is, is we are copying the word. So I pray the Lord God will help us and be able to, to understand the seminary and know the truth of the kingdom of God. The church is still uh, the body of Christ. It's no more a building. And praise the Lord, Jesus, the game is changed now. With the lockdown, hmm, things are changing. Jesus is taking his people, gathering his people, spiritual people, those who are walking in spirit, those who know him, those who have a encounter with him, is, is, is teaching them, is training them through his own end-time soldiers and end-time disciples and preparing them for heaven because all the instituted churches are not preparing anybody anybody for heaven no most of them are just preparing them for their pockets it's so sad it's sad and giving them all false hope of heaven yes but i i thank god because now that lockdown churches is going the church, the body of Christ, the living body of Christ is going back to the church pattern. Home churches, praise the Lord, gathering under the tree. Yes, it's, it's a shift. There's a shift now. And, you know, all the mega churches, all the institution that has been put in place, all this, why they are coming down. They are crumbling down in Jesus' name. So uh, I pray the Lord will continue to help us. Are you there? You have not given your life to Jesus Christ. Please repent of your sin. Ask for forgiveness. Jesus died for your sins. Believe that he died for you. And uh, confess him as your Lord and Savior. Call him into your heart. Ask him to, to be your personal Lord and Savior. And I pray that uh, the Lord will continue to uphold you as you follow him in obedience God bless you. Amen.